the Word of God is the foundation for successful living. Get the Word of God in you and be transformed by the power-packed teaching from the senior pastor, Faith Tabernacle Ota, Dr. David Oyedepo. Lord, touch me today. Give me a turnaround touch today. Let today be that day I've long been waiting for. In Jesus' precious name, Lord, we ask for your unique hand this morning upon every life. There are days and there are certain days. Let today be marked as a certain day in everyone's life. Give everyone a life around a lifetime touch today in the name of Jesus. Last Friday night was an unusual time in this tabernacle. And I like to uh, admonish every one of us to get the CDs or DVD of that event. A Greater Than Solomon is here, part one to part three. And I'd like you to know that um, as you key into those great revelations from heaven, watch out for amazing transformations in your life. Remember, among other things, we said you are too loaded to be grounded. Say with me, I'm too loaded to be grounded. Say again, I'm too loaded to be stranded. I'm too loaded to be trapped. I am too loaded to be defeated. I am too loaded to be a victim. As you connect with the mysteries of divine wisdom, your mastery over life circumstances will be established. And it's so important for us to know that this has to be communicated by revelation. And that's why everybody needs time to connect with what is happening this hour in the name of Jesus. What wisdom is this? Now we go to part three. The Friday night services were separately packaged. A greater than Solomon is here, part one to three. So if you are asking for it, please know what you are asking for. And then what wisdom is this? We are going on the second round and this is part three of it. Why do we need the spirit of wisdom? Why do we need the spirit of wisdom? It is our only proven access to the mystery of divine wisdom. Say with me, the only proven access to the mystery of divine wisdom. The reason is, divine wisdom can only be revealed, it cannot be discovered. Divine wisdom can only be revealed, it cannot be discovered. There is no natural access to divine wisdom. It's a spiritual virtue and only can be assessed through spiritual means. He said, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Yet not the wisdom of this world, not the wisdom of this world that came to naught. But the spirit of but the wisdom of God, which the princes of this world never knew. For had they knew it, they would not have crucified the prince of glory. For eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, has not entered the heart of any man the things that God has prepared, the kind of wisdom that God has packaged for them that believe in him. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6 to 10. 
So it can only be revealed, it cannot be discovered. The secret things belong unto God. But those things that are revealed, not those that are discovered. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29. That's why we need the spirit of wisdom. Paul was speaking in Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. He said, for this cause I bow my knees and pray that to my that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ might give unto you the spirit of wisdom, your only access to revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding may be opened. So the spirit of wisdom is our eye opener. Come and say eye opener. It's our eye opener. That is the only way to connect with the revelations of divine wisdom. You cannot assess it by any other means. It comes to us by revelation. Can I hear your amen? amen. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. <laughs> it was revealed. Daniel 2.19 it was revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. And Daniel testified in verse 20 to 23 that this is, I bless the Lord God of heaven for wisdom and might are his. You know, and he went on in verse 27, he said, this secret was not revealed unto me because of any wisdom that I have. It is God who unfolded it. So, divine wisdom can only be unfolded by the ministry of the spirit of wisdom. Can I hear your amen? amen? That's why you must have appropriate value for this virtue. The spirit of wisdom is your only access to the continuous flow of divine wisdom. My only access. Our only access. For the spirit of God. Such is all things, yea, the deep things of God. The deep things of God cannot be assessed through intellectual force. No, it is the Spirit of God that searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Divine wisdom cannot be discovered, it can only be revealed. And the Spirit of wisdom is your access and my access. To God's wisdom bank, for he searches all things, yea, the deep, deep things of God. There was no way anybody could can connect with the dream of another man except by God, the custodian of all secrets. I can't connect with the dream you had in the night until you tell me I can know it. It is not accessible naturally. It's not accessible supernaturally, you know, intellectually. It's not even accessible diabolically. That's why all the magicians were confused. They say, King, the thing you have asked, no one has ever asked this kind of question. For there is no man on this earth who can assess it. So diabolical forces bow to it that it is not possible. But there is a God in heaven that reveals a secret. Can I hear your amen? amen? Everything choking your life will be exposed this month. Amen. Everything choking your family will be exposed this month. For there is a God in heaven that revealed secret. The magician said, don't ask all this question. No, no king has ever asked it. And no man under heaven can provide an answer to what you are asking. But Daniel said, give us time. We know where the answer is. <laughs> we know where the answer is. We know where the answer is. That's why you need and I need it is not your ability to read or the number of degrees you have earned that will ever give you access to divine wisdom. It's a world of difference. My ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Why do we need the spirit of wisdom? We need the spirit of wisdom because it is our only proven access to God's wisdom bank. Genesis 41 and verse 38 he said in as much as God has shown you all these things <laughs> verse 38 39 there is no one as wise and discreet as thou art 
God showed him. How do you prescribe food preservation for 14 years? You start gathering this year for the next seven years and they are going to start distributing from the next eight years to the 14th year and there was no report that anything got spoiled. In Genesis, there were no chemicals. God showed him. You see, God will show you amazing things this month. Yeah. You know, if you don't tune in to AIT, you can't see what they are showing. You need to tune in to God. For him to show you the next step you need to take. The next way to turn. The next place to be. The next thing to do. October 1, 1983. I went to have some private time with God. And as I got to the field. The Holy Ghost quickened me. And I opened my Bible. And I saw I am the Lord that leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go. I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit. Then the voice of heaven came. I am committed to leading you if you are committed to following me. I don't lead any Jack and Harry. I lead only those I know are committed to following me. I don't sell my respect and honor to any donkey. If I know you are not willing to follow me, I don't show you nothing. You go on your own. He said, if you are committed, he said, I'm committed to leading you if you are committed to following me. So, my leading you is determined by you. Are you committed to following me or just carry your big head somewhere? <laughs> I mean, that filled my day. You know, you don't forget an encounter with God in a hurry. Moses will never forget the burning bush. I don't have to write that down. It's he said, boy, I know you are looking for me, but I'm only committed to leading you if you are committed to following me. I said, Lord, I am committed. I vow to remain committed to following you. It is that foolishness of following him that brought us to this forest. You cannot connect with what God is showing without tuning in to God. Can I hear your amen? Amen. Why do we need the spirit? You need to know what you need by understanding what benefits it holds for you. Everybody needs the spirit of wisdom. And we cried on Friday night and asked the Lord. And I know without any doubt that many of us have been endued with that spirit of wisdom. Why do we need the spirit of wisdom? Our only proven access into the mysteries of divine wisdom. After they were defeated, you know, uh, at I in John in Judges chapter seven, I mean Joshua chapter seven, Joshua fell down, you know, had his clothes rent and poured ashes on his head and lay flat before the Lord. Lord, what is happening? We crossed Jericho. And now we can't overtake I. What's going on? What would the enemy say? God said, get up. There is sin in the camp. And I'll turn my back until that is dealt with. For Israel has sin. Come and see divine wisdom. Now, that man was filled with the spirit of wisdom, you remember? In Deuteronomy 34 verse 9. That is the work of wisdom is to unravel the secret behind your challenges. Can I hear your amen? amen? The secret behind your challenges. He said, get up. There is sin in the camp. This is what to do. That cannot be assessed by any method. Except by the spirit of wisdom. Can I hear your amen? amen. Whatever is behind the stress and the strain. In any area of your life will be unfolded this month. Yeah. I said this month will not be over before they are unfolded. Yeah. 
Now, why do we need the spirit of wisdom? Number two reason we need that is it does not only show you what to do, it empowers you to do it. Come and say empowers. It empowers you to do it. What yes thou? He said, I saw seven golden candlesticks with all of gold. He said, you have seen well, but it is not accomplishable by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord God of hosts. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 1 to 6. What you see is one. What you are able to do with it is another. So the spirit of God does not only show you which way to go, he empowers you to go there. Now, now, let me say this to you. It's one thing for God to tell you, boy, this is the place I've ordained for you to be. It's another thing for you to have the courage to go there. How can you be going away from people when you are to minister to people? Come and say, his ways are higher. <laughs> I mean, you are... Uh, you are running away from people and you are supposed to be this to people. It, it's it. You have to be empowered uniquely to do it. Come and say empowered. Empower. I'd like you to know that. Now, that's what happened to men like Daniel. The spirit of the Holy Ghost was in him. He had an excellent spirit. So even when he was threatened by death, he had enough fortitude by the strength in the inner man, energization of the spirit of God, to say, no, I'm not going to bow to any other idol. It takes divine energy to wade through challenges in the implementation of revelations. Come and say revelations. Uh -huh. And it is not wisdom until it is applied. What you see is knowledge. It is the application that converts it to wisdom. Whosoever he already said, no, my hand doeth them the same as a wise man. Matthew 7, 24 to 28. Why do we need the spirit of wisdom? We need the spirit of wisdom to be empowered to walk in wisdom. Empowerment to walk in wisdom is by the operation of the spirit of wisdom. Glory to God. That's why you and I need the spirit of wisdom. Everybody knows that giving is the way to enrichment. But how many are engraced in giving? <laughs> so it takes the engracement of giving to become great in giving and enjoy greatness from heaven. Everybody knows you love your wife as Christ loves the church. But how many men love their wife as Christ loves the church? It's impossible to walk in wisdom without the spirit of wisdom at work in your life. Daniel prevailed. Joseph prevailed. Joshua prevailed. All by the oppression of the spirit of wisdom. Can I hear your amen? So it's required on a two levels. One, to assess God's wisdom bank. Two, to walk in it. I must say this at this point, and I think I mentioned on Friday night. Now, Solomon had the gift of divine wisdom. But he didn't have the spirit of divine wisdom. Solomon taught amazing things about strange women. In chapter 5 of Proverbs and chapter 6 of Proverbs. And he became a victim of the same thing in 1 Corinthians, First Kings chapter 11 verse 1. And Solomon loved many strange women. And he said, whosoever follows after their path is void of understanding. He taught us that in chapter 6. He taught us that in chapter 5. And he became a victim because he didn't have the energy, the divine energy required to walk in the light that he saw. But we saw Joseph. Can we find a man such as this? This is a man in whom the spirit of God is. 
He conquered Potiphar's wife. Look at the man called Daniel. He was faithful. He was a faithful man. They couldn't find any fault with him. And the Bible says in that same chapter 6 of Daniel that an excellent spirit was in him. There was a spirit working that in him. He was a public officer. He was the Senate president. He was taught in command in the land. There was nothing found against him. Why? He had the divine inner strength to walk in the light that he had. Think of Joshua. He was full of he was filled with the spirit of wisdom. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. He led the people into the promised land and divided the land by lots. Can I hear your amen? amen? That's why you and I need the spirit of wisdom to be able to walk effectively in wisdom. We need it. Solomon that built the temple built shrines. That's why we were crying last Sunday. I don't want, I must not end my journey like Solomon. No, no, I must not end my journey like Solomon. I'm trying to point to you the, the difference between having access to wisdom and being able to walk in it. There are two different things. Thank you, Jesus. The best in you is just about coming to light. Let me hear your loudest amen if you believe that. That's why you need and I need the spirit of wisdom to be kept alive in us. The Bible said, if we walk after the flesh, ye shall die. Romans 8, 13. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. So it is the spirit that keeps the flesh under. It keeps the flesh what? Under. There is no way the flesh can keep the flesh under. Romans 8, 13. It is only the spirit that can keep the flesh under. The flesh was going to say, no, it is impossible to move church here. And the spirit said, but this is the place. And conquer the flesh. Only the spirit can subdue the flesh. Oh, you are going to remove your tithe in spite of all the challenges you are facing? <laughs> and the Spirit said, but that is the only way to keep the heaven open. Then the flesh surrenders. Is somebody here know what I'm talking about? You are breaking forth. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profit nothing. <laughs> it is the spirit that keeps you alive to the things of God. The flesh profited nothing. So we need the spirit of wisdom and we need to know how to keep that spirit of God alive in us. What wisdom is this? It is wisdom from above. What wisdom is this? It is divine wisdom. What wisdom is this? It is the wisdom of God. How do I assess it? It's inaccessible except by the ministry of the spirit of wisdom who is our God ordained eye opener to see the things that are freely given to us in God. Now the next question quickly is How do I keep the spirit of wisdom alive in me? It's interesting for us to know that the spirit of God can be quenched. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 19. It said, quench not the spirit. The spirit can be quenched. So it's important for us to know how to keep the spirit of wisdom alive in us. In Ephesians 4 and verse 30, 
He said, and grieve not the Holy Spirit. Grieve not the Spirit of God. Grieve not. You can grieve him and you grieve him to a point of quenching him. Can I hear your amen? So he can be grieved and he can be quenched. He said that's talking about the Holy Spirit. Now listen to this. There is one God. There is one Spirit. There is one baptism. Ephesians 4, verses 4 and 5. Now you see, it's one spirit, one body. There is one body, there is one spirit, even as he according to one hope of your calling. One spirit. So when you talk about the Holy Spirit, you talk about the spirit of wisdom. Because the spirit of wisdom is a factor of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the embodiment of the seven spirits of God. Come and say the embodiment. In John chapter 3 verse 34, Jesus was given the spirit without measure. And the Bible said he's the one that has the seven spirits of God. And that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a seven component spirit. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 and, and verse 1 to 3. He said, a rush shall comfort out of the stem of Jesse, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, of counsel, of knowledge, of might, of understanding, and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, or in the things of God. For he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor after the hearing of his ears. He shall make him supernaturally smart. He will assess supernatural depth. And he listed the seven spirits of God there. And here are they. The spirit of wisdom, of counsel, of knowledge, of understanding. Then he talks about of the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, and then he talks about might and, what is it? And the spirit of the Lord, which is the anointing of the Holy Spirit now, you see. He, he empowers you spiritually. He empowers you physically. Might. Come and say might. Now, that means the spirit of the seven spirits essentially the spirit of wisdom and power. Come and say wisdom and power. Might energizes your physical system. The spirit of the Lord energizes your spirit man for supernatural exploit. Amen. And then wisdom, counsel, understanding, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord equals wisdom. Equals what? In fact, if you want to separate might from it, it's still possible. Because the Bible said, a wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. So take that from it. That means six over seven. The Holy Spirit is six over seven of the seven spirits of God. I mean, wisdom is six over seven of the seven spirits of God. So the Holy Spirit is essentially the spirit of wisdom. What wisdom is this? That was the thing pronounced in his life. He was operating in another sphere altogether. Revelation 3 1. This is the word of he that has the seven spirits of God. Revelation 4 5. The seven spirits of God. Revelation 5 6. The seven spirits of God. All pointing to what was upon Jesus. Can I hear your amen? amen. All pointing to what was upon Jesus. Revelation 3 1. Revelation 4 5. And Revelation chapter 5 verse 6. They're talking about the seven spirits of God. The spirit of wisdom. I mean, he made it to the end. You are going to make it to the end. Yeah. You are going to make it to the end. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Wisdom is all one. One Spirit. One body. Called into one hope. One God. One faith. One baptism. The Spirit of God is one. How do I keep the Spirit of Wisdom alive in me? Whatever is not kept active will be destroyed. Through idleness, a building decays. And by slothfulness of hands, a house drops through. Chapter 10 of Ecclesiastes verse 18. If you don't walk it, it will lose its worth in your life. How do I engage the spirit of wisdom in order to keep him alive in me. One, you engage the spirit of wisdom in prayers. Come and say in prayers. 
call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. The Spirit itself helpeth our infirmity. For we don't know what we should pray for as we ought to. So we engage the Spirit of God in prayers. Building up yourself, Jude verse 20, upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Every time you are at a crossroad, call for light, for direction. By so doing, you are engaging the Spirit of wisdom actively in your life call upon me refuse to be stranded refuse to be granted call upon me and i will answer you and i will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not the spirit itself help it our infirmity help it he helps he helps us for we know not what we should pray for as we ought we know not what so he helps us so as you charge in the spirit, you are keeping the spirit of wisdom alive. Oh Lord, there must be a way out. Yashiganama, Lotes Kelia Yetamo, Bradia, Zizo Rabe, Yaketa Zuzumalo. And then the Spirit of God keeps searching for the answers for you. That's how you build your faith. He brings the word of God to bear as you pray in the Holy Ghost. For the deep, call it unto the deep. And the wisdom of God, they are the deep things of God. Can I hear your amen? amen. And the, your spirit is your depth. So you engage. He said, my spirit prayeth. Every time you pray in the spirit, your spirit man is praying. And you will search for me and find me where you will see for me with all your heart. So you are engaging your heart by praying in the Holy Spirit to find an answer. Can I hear your amen? amen. Somebody's having a breakthrough this time. If that looks like you, let me hear your loudest. Amen. If you keep the battery of your car unused for a period of time, it runs down. Amen. If you don't engage the Holy Spirit, it goes down. Give us time, Daniel said, and we'll show you the secret. And they went to pray. They engaged the spirit of wisdom. And then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Daniel 2, 16 to 19. Amazing secrets will be unfolded to you in night visions all through this month. Some of us should be on level 12. In our business, we are still on level 2. Because the light required to break forth to the next levels, we have not received it. If you want to keep the spirit of God alive or the spirit of wisdom alive in you, engage him in prayers. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. James 1.5 let him ask. Let him ask. I am spirit of God. Bring me the light I need to deal with this situation. Show me where the Achan is that is resisting my victory. Show me what it is that is behind this stress and strain in my life. Then you are on. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. How do we engage the spirit of wisdom in order to keep him alive in us. Number two, we engage the spirit of wisdom in our studious life. We engage him in our studies. Come and say engage. We engage him in our studies. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. We engage him in, we don't just pick the books like you pick your history book. You pick the Bible and anointed books calling for the help of the Holy Spirit to open you up. To open you up. Daniel was filled with the spirit of wisdom. They call it excellent spirit. But he was also a man of books. 
and I, Daniel, understood by books. He engaged the spirit of wisdom and understanding in his studies. Daniel 9 2. He engaged him in his studies. Spirit of God, show me the secret behind kingdom prosperity. Amen. And then I went on a search adventure. Spirit of God, show me, show me, show me. And then on the third day, the heaven was open. Something unusual will open to someone here at this time. Yeah. You engage him in your search. In Luke chapter 13 and verse 8 and 9. Which woman among you? Luke chapter 13. Or Luke chapter 15, sorry. Luke 15, verse 8 and 9. And which woman among you having ten pieces of silver, if she loses one, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek it diligently till she find it? She lights a candle. Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord and he searches all the inward parts of the belly. And the spirit of God works with your spirit in the side. For the spirit of God, bear the witness of our spirit that we are children of God. So the spirit of God does not work with your intellect, he works with your spirit. Can I hear your amen? When he lights a candle, that means he engages his spirit to engage the Holy Spirit in the search and then started sweeping the house. That book is a house. The Bible is a house. That is God's wisdom house. And he was sweeping through the house with the help of the Holy Spirit till she found it because it is there. Help me tell your neighbor the answer you are looking for is in that book. You lost the coin in the house. It must be in the house. Nobody has come to the house. So sweep it until you find it. But light your candle. You can't find in a dark room. You have to light it up. The spirit of God is a spirit of light. He works with your spirit in the search to find it. Now we had the story of a man called Paul the Apostle. Paul was definitely one of the most anointed mortars that ever walked the planet Earth. The devil said, Jesus I know and Paul I know. Amen? That is his anointing rating. That was his, the rating of his anointing by the forces of darkness. Can I hear your amen? In Acts chapter 19, beginning from verse 14, talking about the sons of Sceva. And this anointed man engaged in a studious life to keep the spirit of wisdom alive in him. It's impossible to keep a battery working without putting it to work. It will run down. It will run down. Hallelujah. We engage him to unfold to us the mysteries, the mysteries of divine wisdom in our search. For thy word is a lamp unto my feet. We read it this morning. And a light unto my path. He always shows the way out of troubles. The way up in our pursuit. And the way forward in accomplishing our desires. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? That's so important. And number three, very importantly, we engage the spirit of wisdom in our meditations we engage him in our meditations through desire a man having separated himself to meditate on the word of god seek it and intermeddle with all wisdom proverbs 18 1 we engage him in our meditation we engage him in our meditation In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, he said, Give attention to reading, 
to exhortation and to doctrines. And verse 15 said, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. So meditation is a way of engaging the spirit in searching for answers to the bugging questions of our life. Jesus did when they brought the woman to him that was caught in adultery. And they said, Moses said, we should stone him. What do you say? The Bible says he stooped down and began to write on the ground with his fingers. And then he lifted up his eyes, haven't found the answer in meditation. Any of you that has never committed sin, let him be the first one to cast a stone at her. And bend down again to start writing, waiting for their response. And gathering what is required to react to their response. And one by one it disappeared. And Jesus stood up and said, neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Amen. That's in John chapter 8 and verse 1 to 11. And God said to Joshua, Though you are filled with the spirit of wisdom, but this is the way to keep the spirit alive. This book. Everybody say this book. Go on a search read of what is required per time from this book. Meditate therein. Take this book. Engage the force of meditation. And you keep the spirit of wisdom you have received alive in you. And we saw Joshua in chapter 7 of Joshua lying down before the Lord and praying. Spirit of wisdom, what's going on here? And then an answer was obtained. So we saw this engagement in Joshua's life. Joshua was given the book in Joshua 1.8 and was asked to meditate upon it day and night. In chapter 7 we saw him in prayers. Now I've not found what it is in the book. I have not been able to reason it out, but you have the answer. Now, where is the answer? So, we saw him in prayers. We saw him in studies. We saw him in meditation. And the spirit of wisdom was kept alive in him. Can I hear your amen? amen. The last defeat you saw is the last we ever see in your life. Amen. No one here shall be a victim of stagnation again. No one here shall be a victim of stagnation again. No one here shall be a victim of stagnation again. What is meditation? Meditation is the art of thinking through scriptures with the help of the Holy Spirit for desired answers. Thinking through scriptures with the help of the Holy Spirit for desired answers. Thinking through scriptures with the help of the Holy Spirit for desired answers. Thinking through scriptures. What is meditation? It can also be, the, this, it can also be defined as the spiritual medium through which we squeeze the juice of divine wisdom from scriptures in order to create a desired future. Now I come again. Meditation can be defined as the spiritual wisdom, the spiritual medium through which we squeeze, like you take an orange and squeeze the juice out of it, squeeze the juice of divine wisdom from scriptures in order to create a desired future you are squeezing the juice of divine wisdom from scriptures in order to create your desired future there must be an answer here spirit of god where is it and then you take your note and take a walk in the night in your house or in your company, there must be an answer. Lea ya shaga, mabo, babekia, ezuzuria, laka tandelo, rouge. And you are charging the spirit to fetch you the answer. So, <laughs> meditation is a spiritual wisdom through which you squeeze the juice of divine wisdom from scriptures in order to create 
a desired future. This is what I, I desire. And I know you have the answer to get me across. I want my health restored. What is stopping the full restoration of my health? I want this business to take a new turn. Where am I still missing it? And then you engage on a meditational adventure. Like the young man called Isaac. He went to the field to meditate there. Genesis chapter 24 and verse, 20, verse 63. Genesis 24 and 63. He went to the field to meditate there. He went to the field to meditate there. And when he lifted up his eyes, he saw and behold the camels are coming. The answers are always rushing when you go out there. Can I hear your amen? How does it happen? Meditation in the world provokes inspiration. Come and say inspiration. Which in turn stimulates the flow of revelations. Meditation provokes inspiration. There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the almighty give them understanding. So when you engage in meditation you are setting the pace for the flow of inspiration and with inspiration comes revelation which is what connects you to the wisdom source of god can i hear your amen all scriptures which is god's wisdom is given by the inspiration of god come on say inspiration Meditation is a platform upon which inspiration flows. Meditation is a platform upon which inspiration flows. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? That's why it's important, therefore, to understand the value of quietness. Everybody say quietness. He said, be still, and you will know that I'm God. I'll be exalted in the earth. I'll be exalted among the heathen. Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom. He has a desire in his heart. He separates himself in meditation to connect with the wisdom desire to deliver his desires. Through desire, a man having separated himself until he separates himself, he cannot connect with it. That's why the Bible calls it an ornament. It calls it in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4. He said, 1 Peter 3 verse 4. It calls the spirit of quietness. He said, the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Which in the sight of God is of a great price. Come on, say great price. It's a great asset to program some good quality quietness for yourself. The voice of the Lord was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. You need to create an environment for quality meditation, the platform for inspiration, the gateway to revelations. You need to. You know what he said in first. Thessalonians 4 verse 11. Study to be quiet. That means program to be quiet. And focus on your own business. Study to be quiet. Study to be quiet. So it's time for us to understand that we need to study to be quiet. We need to organize quietness for breakthroughs that we desire. You've had enough noise around you. You need some quietness. The voice of the Lord was walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. Come and say the cool of the day. In the cool of the day, in Genesis chapter 3, the voice of God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. In the cool of the day. In 1 Kings chapter 19, we saw a drama there, verse 11 to 17. God said to Elijah, he said, come out now, I want to talk to you. And then there was an earthquake. God was not there. There was fire. God was not there. Then a still small voice. Come and say still small voice. So only 
people that are quiet enough can catch it a still small for voice a still small voice and that was the voice of solutions come and say the voice of solutions elijah was at the point of suicide come and say point of suicide he said god take my life what am i doing here and god said well because you don't know the way forward come out now i'll show you the way forward and then there was fire god was not there there was earthquake god was not there there was a strong wind god was not there then a still small voice he said this is what to do and noise so and so has came and noise so and so has prophet in your room and then your life continues the answer to the bugging questions of your life we receive we come down to you this time yeah. this month will not pass without your tangible deliveries in the name of jesus yeah. if that sounds like applies to you let me hear your loudest amen yeah. 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 it takes he said, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Come and say quietness. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15. He said, I've cried concerning this, verse 21, that their strength is to sit still. Come and say still you need to quiet to practice some stillness in your quest for an answer their strength is to sit still it's so important for us to understand this that meditation works best in quiet times and still moments so you can connect with the still small voice and you can have fellowship with god walking in your garden in the cool of the day and that is the voice of answers the voice of solutions can i hear your loudest amen yeah. it's a new day yeah. i see solution bearers sitting down in this room today yeah. i see men and women who will turn and change the face of africa sitting down here today I see men and women who will bring a new order of glory back to the black man sitting down here today. Yeah. If you are one of them, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. It's time to shut the door. Let me tell your neighbor, it's time to shut the door. Against noise and turbulence and connect with heaven for the answers amen amen shout hallelujah shout hallelujah i had seven instances here that will be very illustrative for what we are trying to discuss i saw matthew chapter 6 verse 33 as the jackpot of destiny say with me jackpot of destiny you can't operate in the light of that truth and not triumph gloriously it's i know that you have need of all these things but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you here is what god told me Seek ye first my kingdom. There will not be a second thing to seek. All these things that others are dying to get, they shall be added to you. I heard him speak to me in clear terms, September 1976. And I defined it as the jackpot of destiny. Did you hear the testimony of that uh, man from Kampala that was read to us? He said, I went to scrub the church with the detergent and manufacturing. It was not selling. I need a breakthrough. And I have an understanding. Come and say understanding. <laughs> he said, I have an understanding that when I engage myself with God, my destiny will open up. And he used five liters. Come and say five liters. And then the following week, he had an order for 600 jerrycans. 600 what? 
the following week. The following week. is I have an understanding. The things to do without understanding has no life in them. A man that is void of understanding is, uh, he shall abide in the condition of the dead. Proverbs 21 verse 16. Doing it does not make it work. It's doing it with understanding that makes it work. He said you will not have a second thing to seek. That was 1976. This is 2009. That is 33 clear years. How many years? Man is walking like fire. He's walking like fire. He's walking like fire. Meditation brought it to me. I've been trying to get it from the book. I've not found it. I was reading and reasoning. I was reading and meditating on the book the man God uses. And my help was open. Friends, if you are not a seeker, you never become a finder. I'd like you to invest in knowledge. God spoke to me through that book. Amen. And my destiny opened up. My destiny took shape. I stopped pursuing and running after things like young men would do. I started running after God with an understanding that that is the gateway to having all my needs met. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Lord, show me the secret of kingdom prosperity. And then came open the heavens. My prosperity plan is not a promise. Come and say the voice of wisdom. Say loud the voice of wisdom. What you hear in your meditation with the help of the Holy Spirit is the voice of wisdom. He said, it's not a promise. It cannot be realized by prayers. It has no respect for fasting. It is a covenant. Until your part is played, I am not committed. Say with me the voice of wisdom. I mean the voice of wisdom came knocking and opened up my prosperous destiny. March 22nd, 1982. October 1, October 4, 1981, the Holy Ghost said to me, But thou shalt not borrow. Woo. It was normal. I said, But why? He said, Because the borrower is servant to the lender. I said, But why? He said, And you cannot serve two masters. You have to choose one and despise the other. You choose the lender, you can't have me at the same time. I said, but why? He said, your borrowing is only saying to me, you are bigger than where you are. And I'm too, I'm too slow to understand that you should be higher than where you are. That's why you borrow to buy shoes, and borrow to buy egg gears, borrow to buy earrings. Who is looking at your ears? He said, I'm too slow for you, so you have chosen another Lord over your life. He said, secondly, it's, an, it's a demonstration of your covetousness. You want to live above where you are at a point in time. He said, choose the lender and you lose me. Make your choice. And I vow. I wrote her a letter. 11 page letter. I vow. When about to get married. I said, never will I be involved. If it means doing without food for days. And we are in the same pair of shoes for years. I will never beg nor borrow. He delivered me through the act of meditation. Asking probing questions and opening up for direct answers. And the answers were coming. The answers were coming. When Isaac was meditating, he saw the comments coming. The comments were coming. The answers were coming. The answers were coming. You can imagine if your ministry were a borrowing ministry. We would have so borrowed that we would have been harrowed. There is no dignity in borrowing. I don't care who you are. He told Abraham, from the place where thou art, Abraham never borrowed. And he was blessed in all things. He's still the symbol of heaven's blessing on the earth today. He said, from the place where you are. Come and say, I'll be satisfied with the place where I am. I saw the graph of our 20 years. I asked them to prepare it. The graph of our 20 years of income. It was like this. 20 years was like this. Continuous flow because you are empowered to walk in the things you find. Somebody here is knocking his head. Nah, no way. How can you say no borrow? I borrow. borrow. In fact, I borrow not a few. <laughs> it is impossible to do any business without borrowing. That's why you are borrowing. No, you are borrowing. 
if you see Canaan land, the whole Canaan land and Covenant University on the new map of our property, it's like a point. The whole Canaan land. It's like a point. It's on top. I'll show it to the pastor this afternoon. It's on top. You just, you'll be looking for it. Where is it? When compared with the volume of what has happened. Friend, you need to just settle down and believe God. You have struggled enough. It's time to believe God. How many want to be free from everything called debt? You, you need to be free. You have struggled enough. You need to be free. You need to be a world thinker in order to emerge a kingdom star. If you are not a world thinker, you never become a kingdom star. You need to become a world thinker in order to become a kingdom star. There is a star in you crying for expression. But the flesh is covering it. I borrow. I must borrow. Our first office in this ministry was 100 naira per month. 100 naira per month for six of us. 100 naira per month. I had my seat in the inner room and then they had other five seats outside and we were having a great time in God's presence. Never had to pray for office rent. People don't care how to get started. They just want to start from the top. He said, who are despite the days of small things? They never see great days come. But I see your greatness opening up. Yeah. I see your greatness opening up. Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. What is in the communion? Now let's go. Can I have a cup you have brought to me? And some bread. The communion from Paul's revelation in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30, is God's mystery designed for your total health, your total, your divine strength, and longevity. That's, he said, some took it on and for this reason, they are weak and sickly and many of them die that means when you take with with understanding with the required level of understanding you are strong healthy and you enjoy longevity come and say strong that is god's covenant toast for your strength, your health, and your longevity. I like to approach this table today with understanding. That young man said, I did it with understanding. Now, all those testimonies read from Kampala were from different ministries. Were from where? I did it with understanding. And the word says in Matthew 13, 23, that he that receives the seed in the good ground are those who hear the word and understand that it. And the same brought forth fruit, hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. So your degree of understanding is what determines the degree of results you can command. What is in the communion? It's not a ritual. It's a covenant toast for the believers total strength, total health, and confirmed longevity. Come and say confirmed longevity. Everyone appointed to death this morning, that appointment is cancelled forever. <laughs> what is in the bread? The bread is a product of the plant. And we saw, among other things, that there was the rod in the hand of Aaron. And when Aaron placed down his rod, it was turned to a serpent. And then the magicians also put down their rods, they were turned to serpents. But the Bible said, Aaron's rod swallowed up the rods of the magicians. A rod shall come forth out of the stem of Jesse. His name will be called Jesus. And this is his flesh. So when you take the flesh in, you are taking the rod in. 
Come on now. And when you take the rod in, its mission is to swallow up all the rods of the magicians in your body. So every satanic incursion in your health will be swallowed up practically this morning. How many believe that? Say with me, I believe. I believe. That when you take the bread in your hand, have this understanding. I am swallowing the rod that is out of the stem of Jesse. This is his flesh. And as I take it, I swallow the rod. And the rod goes in to swallow the rods of all the magicians in my body. So every Satan Satanic incursion in your body will be swallowed up in victory right now. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen if you are there. Yeah. What else is in the bread? There was a time the sons of the prophet went to take guards from the field in Second Kings chapter 4 and verse 41. There was death in the pot, they cried. And then the prophet said, bring me a meal. And as he dropped the meal into the pot, he said, pour out for the people that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. As you take the bread in, you are taking in the poison neutralizer. That is the miracle meal. Every poison in your body poison in your blood poison in your nerves every poison in your bones and your marrows they drop the meal in the pot your tummy is a biological pot from where the food is recooked after you eat it that's why what you pass in in the toilet is not what you ate it has been reprocessed so it's a pot when you drop in this meal, every poison in your body, in your kidneys, in your liver, in your heart, wherever they may be, that meal is a poison neutralizer. That meal is a poison neutralizer. As you take in the bread, every poison in your body is neutralized. Thank you, Jesus. Satan is in trouble this morning. I said, Satan is in trouble this morning. Every poison in your body is neutralized in the name of Jesus. Every poison in your body is neutralized in the name of Jesus. And what is in the blood for time... The life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17 verse 11. The life of the flesh is in the blood. That's why when anybody is sick, they do a blood work on him to find out what is wrong. The disease is in the blood. The blood must reflect that there's a disease somewhere there. And Jesus came, he knew no sickness. Hallelujah. As you take the cup this morning, see yourself connecting with blood transfusion, a spiritual blood transfusion. Your corrupt blood is going out for his incorruptible blood to come in. That blood is sickness free. So there will be instantaneous miracles here this morning. Every victim of HIV AIDS, you are free today. Every victim of sickle cell anemia, you are free today. Every form of blood cancer is swallowed up today. Let me hear your loudest amen if you are there. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Whatever cannot be found in Christ after this communion they will never be found in your body again 
they will never be found in your body again. They will never be found in your body again. Whatever cannot be traced in Christ, they will never find them in your body again. Can I hear your loudest amen if you are there? Let me hear your loudest amen if you are there. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Finally, what is in the blood? He that knew no sin, that blood is sin free. Come and say sin free. It is said in science that the white blood corpuscles are the soldiers of the body. And their job is to fight every foreign body that comes in there. Jesus' blood is the whitest blood. Come and say, whitest blood. He knew no sin. I'd like you to see the blood we are taking today as the white blood corpuscles. The body soldiers that fight every foreign body that tries to invade your system. Huh? It engulfs it the way Amweba does. And gets rid of it. Every trace of cancer in your body will be engulfed by this blood and removed from your body. Yeah. The blood of Jesus is the spiritual white blood corpuscles that fights all the foreigners in your body. Every foreign agent in your body that's stopping you from having your children, they are swallowed up in victory today. They are swallowed up in victory today. They are swallowed up in victory today. Now I round off with this and it's very important. He gave them the bread and their eyes were open. Inside the bread is the flesh of Jesus. And that flesh includes his body and his intellect. So when he gave them the bread, it did not only affect their physical body, it affected their intellectual component. Their eyes were opened. Luke 24 and verse 30 and 31. Their eyes were opened. Mm. Their intellect came alive. They connected with mental dignity. They connected with mental prowess. Their eyes were open. They came into his class. They had a mind transplant. Come and say mind transplant. Uh -huh. They had a mind transplant. They had a mind transplant. They had a mind transplant. Think of the communion. It's a comprehensive prescription. And then it goes on. The blood purges our conscience from evil works to serve the living God. So you find it affecting your spirit, man, affecting your soul, and affecting your body. Now listen to this. Every habit you hate comes to an end here today. Every habit you detest, you never find them again in your life. Because inside the blood is the power to purge your heart, to purge your conscience from every evil work to serve the living God. So it forges your mind by giving you a mind transplant. For we have the mind of Christ. How do we connect with that? In the communion. You know what I see here? I see an army of inventors rise from here. Rise to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be God. Blessed be God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The eyes of your understanding will be opened by the mercy of this communion today. 
your conscience shall be purged from every evil work to serve God with dignity. Yeah. Lift up your two hands and thank God for the table today. Thank God for the table. In Jesus precious name you know what you don't expect you never experience now wherever you are sitting I like you to know that today must mark the end of every physical challenge in your life <laughs> now I like you to know that today must mark the end of all spiritual challenges in your life <laughs> I like you to know that today must mark the end of all intellectual challenges in your life what you expect is what you experience in hebrews chapter 9 verse 13 and 14 if the blue blood of bulls and of us you know sanctify this so how much more shall the blood of jesus purge your heart and your conscience from every evil work to serve the living god whatever you want to end today must end now you see, I won't like you to walk into this religiously and just say, okay God, anything that is not in my body, let, you know what is in your body. Get rid of it. You know what it is. Let everyone carrying excess children stand in the gap for their children. Today marks the end of it. As they take this thing, it is over. They go for their blood test tomorrow, they can't find it again. Everyone with high blood pressure, today marks the end of it. Whatever is pressing your blood will be swallowed up in victory. Everyone with diabetes today marks the end of it. Everything pressing sugar in your system will be swallowed up in victory. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Every arrow of the magician against your head shall be swallowed up in victory today. You believe that? Shout aloud. Amen. Please get seated quickly. Put down what you desire to have taken out of your system today. This is your month of encounter. And this morning is a morning of divine encounter for you. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. The Spirit of God is asking me to say this to you. As we take the communion. No tree plants itself. Every tree is planted by someone. You are trees of righteousness. You only flourish where he has planted you. Can I hear your amen? amen? Please hear me very well. For they that be planted in the house of God. What happens? They shall flourish in the courts of our God. Now another translation says, Those that be planted by God, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall be fat and flourishing. As I was teaching, the Holy Ghost said to me, if you never came here where I ask you to come, you will have lost your place in destiny. There are people standing here today whose destiny is tied to this house. Come and say tied. You walk away, you suffer a prodigal predicament. You are strip naked. Hear me. He was telling me now. He said you will have lost your place in destiny. You don't choose where you are planted. I choose where to plant you. As you partake of this communion, whatever you desire regarding your health, it will be delivered instantly. Because the blood of Jesus is a weapon of instant intervention. Say with me, instant. As he gave them the bread, there and then their eyes were opened. When? 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 Now, men, as you partake of this communion, here and then, here, now, 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 that disease disappears in your body. Yeah. 